Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters are Deuteronomy 6 and 7. Now remember what we said about Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is essentially a succession of teachings by Moses to this new generation before they go into the promised land. And chapters 6 and 7, he particularly focuses on what you teach your children. And so don't kick out now if you're a grandparent or if you're uh, too young to have kids because these are principles we need to learn for our entire lives. I'm sitting here in front of a double bunk bed in this apartment in Cape Town and reminds me of the double bunks that I made my kids as I grew up. And in fact, when I was a boy growing up, I can remember my dad uh, praying with us while we were little boys before we went to bed. I can also remember watching my dad as I got up in the morning. The very first thing I remember seeing every single morning as I walked down the passageway was my dad sitting on his couch. Sometimes he was asleep with his Bible on his lap, but he was always there, always getting up first thing in the morning, worshiping God, showing us how to live. And so Moses, as he talks to his uh, disciples, he says this, I teach you these things, verse 2, so that you can teach your children and their children after them that they may fear the Lord. We mustn't just assume that our children will follow God. We need to, leadership is purposeful. It doesn't happen by accident. And he explains to them a prayer that he recommends they teach. Hear, O Israel, verse 4, the Lord your God is one. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Now, this prayer in Jewish religion is called the Shema. And it is probably the most important prayer that Jews pray every day, morning, evening. They pray during the day. They teach it to their children when their children are really young. And this is what it means. It, it, the word Shema comes from that Hebrew word to hear. Now, that word here is not just I'm listening. It's to hear with the intent to take action. It's a very active word. So here, be alert, Israel. The Lord your God is one God, which means there is only one God. They're about to go into a promised land where there is lots of idolatry. And we, in a world with lots of idols, idols of sex and of money and power and achievement, etc. And, and we to teach our children to pray this prayer, listen, there is only one God worth following. And then this is what the prayer says. Love the Lord. Now that word love is not just an emotional flitter in the Hebrew. It is a wholehearted devotion, including your mind, your will, your body, everything. So that we're teaching our children that there's one God worthy of our love and our attention and our hope and our will and our desire. He goes on to say, impress them on your children talk about them when you sit at home when you walk along the road when you lie down when you get up in other words you, you, you don't just teach your child once this is how god wants you to live this is his ways this is who god is you don't just do it once in the morning when you walk along the road when you lie down when you get up listen what you teach your children is more about what you're modeling than about what you're saying. You go to church, they'll go to church. You pray, they'll pray. You have morning devotions like my dad did. I have morning devotions. You treat your wife well, they'll treat their spouse as well. And so he's, he's basically saying, this is how you teach your children when you're walking, when you're at school, when you everywhere, how you live. And then in verse 20, it says, in the future, when your son asks you, what are the meanings of these decrees and laws that the Lord commanded you? Then you tell them, we were slaves under Pharaoh and God delivered us. What's he saying? He's saying, tell them your story. Tell them how you were delivered by God. Tell them your testimony. Tell them about how God has meant so much to you. Our testimony, our walk with God is what shapes our children, what shapes our family our spiritual children, those people that are around us. I trust as you read uh, this text that you, you look into it and you see things about discipline and 
personal disciplines and your, your motivations. It's a great chapter to look at as we explore our responsibility to the generation coming beyond us. God bless you. Have a good day.